Playing the Ace is a new web series from ALU's Academic Center for Excellence. Every week, we will be talking about elements and strategies that can help you develop as a learner. Join us and enhance your learning experience. Welcome to Playing the Ace. It's me, Sabrina. And before we dive into this week's high card, let's see who's with us today. Hi, everyone. This is Amy. Hey, everybody. This is Jason. Hi, everyone. Dr. K here. This week is all about communication. And there is no one more important to communicate with than your professor. Let's get into that high card. How many of you have ever sent an email to your professor and didn't really pay attention to what you wrote in said email? It could sound something like, what's up Tom? I missed class last week, so could you tell me what I missed? Thanks. So today, we've got five hot tips for writing an email to your professor. These will change your academic career and help you to develop your character as a professional. Tip number one. The subject line is more than just a blank space. The subject line is the first true identifier your professor will see. Use this space to state your reason for the email. For example, you could write something like, questions about writing assignment one, and then put your course number. Or, I'm gonna be absent on this date, and then your course number. Always put that course number in there so that they know which class you're in. In reference to your first point about the subject line, I want to emphasize the importance of having your course number in that subject line. If you consider it yourself, when you open up your email and you see 40 emails, what do you look at? You look at what they're about. A professor is going to do the same thing, and if they see something pertinent to a course they're teaching, they're probably going to go to it early because they'll know they want to address your issue. Tip number two, every meeting begins with a greeting. Emails are important forms of communication, especially right now in the world of virtual learning. Address your professor using their title, which is something they've earned over time and through hard work. Use something like, Dear Dr. Zabella, or Good Morning Professor. Regarding tip number two, please never address your instructor either in person or in print via email, uh, by his or her first name, unless he or she has given you permission to do that. Um, I love my kids, and even my kids don't call me by my first name. So you need to be given permission to do that. And some professors may. And it may not, titles may not be important to them. Um, But to many, they are. So please look at the syllabus, and usually in the syllabus, um, it will be very clear how the instructor wants to be addressed. You need to remember that your professor is not your friend or your buddy. Your professor is your mentor. And as a mentor, you're asking them something to help you develop intellectually, professionally, socially. So your greeting should indicate that. Using proper titles and formally addressing a faculty member or administrator also demonstrates your character as a student and as a future professional. It conveys respect for their position and we all want to be treated with respect. Tip number three, emails need a substantial body. The body of the email should contain all the important details that you want your professor to know. Repeat the course information. Explain your situation and what you need from the professor. And finally, include a closing. Thanking your professor for their time is always a good way to kind of wrap up that email. So you want to, if possible, keep it as direct, short, and to the point. There may be a conversation that develops in a further email chain, you can save the conversation, so to speak, for that. But as mentioned, the pertinent details that gives your professor all the information they would need to help you 
and the situation get resolved as, you know, as quickly as possible and as really as, as efficiently as possible. One of the things that helps me as an instructor cut down on the time it would take ache to respond um, to a student to help them address their issue is if the student can include screenshots, uh, if they are having a problem or if they're trying um, to uh, to get something resolved. And that way there's not as much back and forth. If you send an attachment, identify it, have a file name that will identify it, and make sure it's easy for the professor to open, which might include making it a PDF or putting it in a specific format the professor asked for. Tip number four, time is money. Everyone has deadlines, so it's important to let your professor know how quickly you need a response or what your timeline is for the situation. I think students need to they need to think in advance and be respectful, you know, of the instructor's time um, and give them, you know, give them time in their schedule to address the problem. Unless it is, uh, I cannot, you know, log in to do my homework, you know, like it's it's very time oriented. No, that's a really good point, Amy. Urgency is um, it kind of fits that whole time frame tip, right? The whole idea behind um, what's the deadline, what's the time frame, you know, you might be looking for a quick answer as a student, but bear in mind your professor needs that time to find the, the answer or find right. what's going to work for that situation. That could be upgrade, updating a grade, that could be, you know, even down to how quickly they respond. Hey, if they could respond to everybody, you know, within an hour, that'd be great. But if you've got 45 emails sitting there, that takes a little bit of time. And finally, hot tip number five. Who are you again? That's right. You need a signature. Emojis are great, but maybe the first time you're emailing your professor, I wouldn't just throw in an emoji. A signature should have your first and last name, your major, any organizations or positions you hold within an organization, and a quote if you want. A lot of people put quotes. So there you go five hot tips for writing an email to your professor. All right, now that I've talked enough, what do we think, group? Do we have anything else our students need to know? I also wanted to say that I think the common thing that all of these tips have is the idea of being respectful. And the tone is very important for the emails that you send. And remember that when you write in all caps, that means shouting. That's how it's often perceived. So I would say do that very sparingly. When you're speaking to a professor, as Amy pointed out, be respectful. But I would really like to give the tip that you should try and be positive and proactive in your request. For example, I complete my assignment. Should I uh, include an annotated bibliography? So that makes you sound like you're thinking about the assignment as a whole. Uh, you know you have to, or you know you should, or you, you think an annotated bibliography is part of it, but you're following up to be certain. You're being proactive. My last tip is make sure that if you are sending an email that you are using the official email of the university. If an instructor gets uh, an email that they don't recognize, they may not be comfortable sharing uh, information with that person because they don't know if that's really the student that's contacting them. And remember that before you click send, review, revise, and edit that email. As always, we want you to show us your hand. Email us at writing at alusa.edu. That's W-R-I-T-I-N-G at alusa.edu with your reflections about the week's topic or ideas for future episode content. Have you ever sent a bad email to a professor? Share your experience with us and we may feature it in one of our other episodes. If you prefer to remain anonymous, just tell us in the body of your email. 
and we won't share it or mention a name. You can also send us a comment or message on our Instagram, olu underscore ace. For this week's wild card, the Sultan Foots Library has a newly designed updated page for APA 7th edition on their website. That's right, students and faculty, 7th edition APA is here and in play. Features on the page include a new tutorial, an easy to navigate quick start page, reference guides, and more. Go check it out. We have the link posted below and all OLU students have access via the OLU portal and the library's main website. Thank you for watching Playing the Ace. A new episode is out every Tuesday, so make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page and follow our social media for announcements and updates. Remember, wear your mask, practice spatial distancing, and don't forget to vote. For now, we say goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. And just so I can get the last word in, our official tagline for the show, don't gamble with your academic success. We'll see you next week.